Hello everyone, good morning. This is Mohamed Hamoud Al Kabbani, a fourth year in aerospace engineering. And today we'll be talking about sustainable consumption and production, which is the first episode of the KO Sustainability Podcast. Our speaker will be Madam, which is a sophomore in aerospace engineering also. So how are you doing, Madam? I'm fine, alhamdulillah. How is your midterms going since it's week so? Yeah, it's fine. It's going fine. Alhamdulillah. Let's start about our podcast. Mm-hmm. Can you like give us a brief intro about what's sustainable consumption and production? Okay, of course. Uh, well, sustainable consumption and production simply is the clever way of using uh, materials, services, or goods in the way that's most eco-friendly and will not cause long-lasting damage to the environment. So it's like going in an eco-friendly way to help the environment. Yes, to kind of like live in a more sustainable or environmentally friendly world rather than relying on traditional material, which is also about the manufacture of sustainable or um, eco-friendly material rather than traditional ones. Yes, that's a nice thing because like sustainability will provide uh, will pro- will make the materials for a long term for us. That's the point. So can you explain like the importance of sustainable consumption and production in today's world? Uh, it's actually very important because you know it has to be implemented in most sectors, probably universities, schools, not just in our homes or amongst ourselves, uh, because it's the effect of air pollution alone, the ambient air pollution or household air pollution, is the cause of 7.6 million, uh, about that, premature deaths annually. So that's a big problem. A really huge number even. We have to, we have to try to minimize this, that actually it causes a lot of diseases, heart diseases, lung cancer, strokes. So it's, it's very important. We have to start like implementing this or finding solutions now before it's too late. And you think sustainability, which I see as like a small or not a big deal, will be able to solve that or deal with that huge number? Well, maybe, but we have to we have to start small. We have to start at some point so we can make the first step yeah. so we can check if it will work. Probably raise awareness or do so and so. Then we will have the bigger impact. Yes, for sure. You should start your first step and see. Right. Yes, that's nice. Uh, moving on with the rise of plastic pollution, how crucial is it for individuals and businesses to limit plastic usage? This is also very, very important. It's uh, highly crucial because, you know, businesses anyway, they use plastic in a much more um, percentage or much more, um, yes, than individuals or than those at homes or something. Because, uh, you know, with all of this manufacture, especially those self-producing companies or businesses, so it's very important to start to find alternatives rather than relying on traditional materials. But like businesses are, they, they start small and some of them like they go with zero profit. Like, you know, at the beginning when you start in a business, you go as a positive profit and then you will go normal to zero profit. Like you will just cover your, your like, what you buy and what you sell, they will just cover each other. So do you think these businesses will be able to go sustainable since it costs a lot? Well, um, I do agree with that point, but I also disagree with the point that sustainability is the problem here when we're talking about um, small businesses or just businesses in general, because as I said, we have to start, even if we start small, we have to start, like even if it's expensive, maybe who knows, maybe it will be produced in a large number in the future and it will be of greater profit to the economy or to businesses. So I guess you mean by that, um, you know, like if everyone starts using sustainable or going sustain in a sustainable way, it will be in a lower cost. In the- yeah, maybe that's what I think, because we can't expect everything to work just like right on when we want it to or when we want a solution, we could find it. No, it would take us time and effort, but we have to make time and effort for our planet. Exactly, you have a point about that. So like, I guess you have heard about that. What does UAE do, uh, did about the plastic? So how do initiatives like the UAE Green Agenda influence other nations to adopt 
to adopt similar measure. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, as you know, since the beginning of 2023 or maybe like December 2022, there was a ban on single-use plastic bags. This is a great improvement. It's uh, in the UAE and probably around this region because, you know, the UAE, its geographical location, it has many political alliances, foreign relations. And given that it's already a multinational community, I think it will be easier to reach than we think. Maybe it would take some time, like a few years, but I think it's not so hard for the UAE to influence other countries or nations. Yes, because like even the UAE have like bigger audience, but people like uh, see it as one of the countries that have a bright future. So by UAE going to that side, it will like help more in sustainability area. That's nice. How do sustainable practices like recycling and, and energy saving contribute to more environmentally friendly work? Uh, because I see them like recycling and energy saving are like a small part of this world. So how they can change sustainability? Okay, well, as what you think, and I think most people, maybe including myself before preparing for this, uh, that these small acts, as you said, they could seem at first small or maybe impossible to start practicing or ongoing with them because it's, it's not seen right away, but it would actually, as I said before, have a bigger impact on the future, a positive impact on our environment. Because, you know, recycling, when we recycle, we save um, materials or we save the use, the need of uh, finding raw material, for example. Do you know what's raw materials? Do you know what are they? Mm, I hear about them, but mm. I don't know exactly what they what do they mean. Mm, so can you tell uh, us about? Yeah, okay. It's like steel, coal, you know, these materials. Are that, like the materials that are uh, found in the environment yeah, yeah. without any like human behaviors or uh, yeah. uh, acting together. We can find it directly from the environment. Yes, raw. So raw materials. Mm. So maybe when we recycle, we can save the need to find these or find new raw materials or to go here and there. It would be much better to save the material we have or even when landfills. Do you know that when we recycle, we save a lot of like a great number of landfills sent or just stacked over each other. So this is it's huge. Yes. So yes. So like you are agreeing with this that recycling and yes. saving will be OK. We have to start. And as we mentioned in the beginning, like even small things matters. Uh, can you shed the light on the concept of green jobs? Mm. Uh, well, this concept is actually interesting. These jobs, they are basically simply jobs in positions such as agriculture, sustainability, uh, like empowering or um, improving sustainability, or probably enhancing the quality of our environment. So, yeah, that's basically it. And what kind of professions fall under this category? Mm, well, they could be of many sectors, such as sustainable or nuclear engineering, uh, environmental specialists. Do you know? Yeah, I think you can think of a couple of those now, just when I said it. So That's nice to know. Now mm. let's moving on. Let's discuss sustainable manufacturing. How do businesses make decisions between eco-friendly materials versus traditional ones? And I mentioned this before, like yes, asking you, like, you I'm as a small business, why I will not go with the way that is cheap? Yes, so you agree with this, not to it. Uh, yeah, for sure. As mm-hmm. like I tell you, I'm starting, I want a positive profit. Oh, but by yes. you letting me go in a friendly way, I'm going in the negative. It will not be against you. Yeah. <laughs> it's not against you, it's for you. So it's for you, everyone. So do you think it's better to go? Eco-friendly or the traditional way? Well, better in a way, but obviously there will be, as I said, it's expensive. It's slow progress. Like, say solar panels, you know how expensive these are. And uh, it takes a lot to implement them, like these fostering of these solar panels. Better to pay an electric bill than to get a solar panel. Exactly. But when you think of it from the environmentally, environmental aspect, it's, it's not as good because Yes, it's expensive. Yes, it's that. But we... we instead we start, of looking at it from a short term, we can look at it from a long term. Yes, we always find what's maybe us as humans, it's our nature, what's easy to get, what's um, much more in hand, you know, rather than actually going or making the effort of something 
say more sustainable now in this topic was yeah so it would take time it would take effort uh, maybe it would be um, more expensive to try and adjust to all what materials the businesses these they, they use or any of that maybe import and export but as I said before maybe if it's produced in larger numbers maybe that's what will happen in the future it would be easier for us to get yes for sure because anything in the market if it's it was there and a lot of like we can find it easily it will be cheapest yes and the world is changing yeah. fast so maybe mm-hmm. what would you say to skeptics like me as a <laughs> Who we'll argue sure, that moving or... towards sustainable consumption might negatively affect the economy? Well, that's the main yeah, question that... we can say in this podcast. <laughs> yes, and that's what you, you were talking to me yeah, about earlier. Okay. Well, okay, skepticism, which is what what it is, it maybe it's found in most claims. Many claims that just arise, you'll find people maybe out of fear, doubt. It's it's that psychologically, it's what happens. But when you actually think of it in the, as I said, sustainable aspect or sustainability. Uh, I think it will be more um, like faster for people to adjust on or to accept that idea other than any or like most claims that uh, receive large numbers of skepti- uh, skepticism. So I think I don't think that will be a problem over the few years. Yes, it will, as I said before, also take time. And it's gonna be, it's going to be hard, very hard to adjust. Maybe some people think, uh, as you said, they, regarding small businesses, it will be hard for them to provide profit and to get this and that materials. But I don't think it's gonna be a problem. If you focus on this, maybe you have to think of something else. What's so always any change moving like from something to something new? It will always be a challenging process for everyone. Yes, and I'm pretty sure that it will be of great profit to the economy later, to sustainability, all this industry. I'm pretty sure. So are you convinced now? A bit. A bit? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So finally, in the context of sustainable resources, how can consumers be more uh, conscious of and make better choices in their daily lives? Uh, well, for this, it was a bit hard for me to think of, actually, or just even now. Because when you do so, maybe probably most people are bored of hearing about this topic, recycling, energy, sustainable, because they're actually not taking action. They're not taking action. So when you do it, when you start, you'll feel the change. You'll feel better and uh, around you, the environment, it's, you know what I mean? So um, if we actually, w- when you do so, you will feel it and you have to start maybe probably by when you go shopping. Right? How do you think of when you go shopping with her, for example? I want to take everything that I need. Fast. You need to take it fast, right? Yeah. Yes. yes, but maybe when we actually like think spare five or three, five minutes before getting something, thinking twice, that would be better. Yeah. That maybe that would actually help. It should be oh So these things that we have now yeah. can be like moved to our grandchildren and Yeah, yeah, maybe. And um, I don't know, maybe um, for organizations or something to hold constructive workshops. Do you know, these work, right? Do you have experience with workshops or something? Or? Uh, some of the workshops in the university, like what we do in the labs. Yeah, yeah these are constructive. Mm-hmm. These are of good um, cause. They get, they get you to the point. So maybe if these were to be uh, introduced or to happen regarding sustainability, more people will listen. So we have to, as I said, we have to start. That's it. So there has to be something. We should make the first. Exactly. There has to be something that can lead to something which is great sustainability to the future, to our environment, to ourselves, our, our like you said, descendants. So it has to be. It was really a nice talk with you, Malik. And I get a bit convinced about this because I was really I'm against glad. it. I'm because so like, glad. I can't I don't want to think about one hundred years forward, but now you just make me think that we should not be selfish about that. Exactly. Thank you for listening to our podcast and hope you would enjoy.